What's up guys, it's Cole from See Through Panel. I wanted to review a book that I showed off in my July Comics haul. It's called Adraste or Adrastea by Matthew Bablay, published by Magnetic Press, retailing for $30 US. So, um, I like I said in that previous video, I buy all of Matthew's work as soon as it's translated and published over here. Um, it is a, He is a French creator, and as I said in that previous video as well, although his line work is really, really nice, and it's obviously clear that I have a preference for very busy, detailed line work, and he fits the bill. Um, what I really am interested in is the color work in this book. Um, I'll also say before we start, I will not be spoiling things through what I'm saying with the audio, but I may spoil things by flipping through the art. So if you're worried about spoilers, just either go just audio or wait until you've read the book. So uh, let's get into it a little bit. The story itself is about the final king of Hyperborea, an immortal man who, uh, after his kingdom falls and all of his family members have died of old age, about a thousand years, he journeys across the land to Mount Olympus to see the gods and ask them why they made him immortal. Uh, as you can tell from the Mount Olympus mention, this is a Greek mythology tale full of a lot of um, Greek stories. We find a, There's a nice glossary in the back here. It shows off as page numbers and everything, tells you what you're looking at if you have any questions about that, if you're not super well versed in Greek mythology, or even if you are, it's really a nice reference. Um, this book does contain a little bit of nudity. It's not very sexually explicit, but um, regardless, YouTube has some weird stuff about that, so I'm going to try and skip it. But The main draw for this book for me is that Matthew Bablay kind of found a nice home in science fiction, and so... Here we get to see him play a little bit in the realm of fantasy, and uh, we get to see a lot more natural landscapes than you normally would in one of his books. Um, when I first saw Running Water in this book, I realized I don't think I've seen him draw that before. And uh, he draws, I mean, he draws natural, um, natural beauty very well. And the colors change a lot in this book from his other books, and I think it's very interesting to look at that technique, so... Here's a nice painted sky. Very muted color there. But we start with a lot of greens as we open here. He's got a very good eye for angles and architecture. And, I mean, he has a director's eye, really. He can visualize a scene and change the angles around and nail them all perfectly. And that is on display a lot in this book. And he does that in almost all of his books. shifts from cool to warm colors very quickly a lot of the time just on the same page here's some of that water I was talking about one of my favorite landscapes here is this uh, this one right here? You can see how it shifts straight into another from very very cool colors to this warm palette here. And I also like this stripe of ink just running straight across the page. The way he plays with light is very interesting too. I think I'll flip to a nice page of that. Skip some of the. There we go. This is, I think, my favorite panel in the entire book. Sadly, I'll have to hold the book at an angle to really show you, but it'll be this panel here. Um, I think it's really interesting in these three panels how the light comes down, and I like the way he does a kind of whitish-yellowish line for the detail in the rocks, but as the light shines in, um, the, the detail becomes just regular black ink. I think that's a really cool idea, and I think he really displays, um, very, he's very skilled when it comes to light play and just angles. He's really good at, I mean, his background work is easily my favorite part of his art. I don't necessarily love his character design. He draws them well, but, um, his figure work is just a little bit stiff for me. But I'm mostly reading for, you know, for, um, 
the the landscapes, the backgrounds, the vistas that he's drawing. Not going to talk much about the story because I don't like to reveal um, a lot. Just checking that there's no nudity before I flipped to this. Um, but here's more, you can actually see his figure work on these two pages. He employs the, uh, the hair bra technique a lot, which, thank you Matthew, so I can actually show some of this stuff. But he's got very angular faces that he draws. Also kind of draws a similar nose on a lot of people. But, um, swatch, swipping, bleh, switching color palettes here. This is Hephaestus. He also does these brief interludes with the the gods. And very interesting color play from bottom to top in a lot of these. So I will oh there's a very nice panel. This is after our main character has kind of just sat around for a very, very, very long time. Even during this, where it's mostly showing, you know, a character, um, he has to just get in the background and draw. An insane grid and very, very detailed background here. Just making sure I don't flip to anything strange. I won't go too much longer, but oh, here's some good action. I wouldn't call it a very action-oriented book. It's more of um, uh, just a journey through um, the world, but there is uh, definitely some action here as this Cyclops barrels through into him. I do really like how he showed that kind of exploding through the wall with our character shooting an arrow into him. Here's a good one. Later in the book, he gets even more crazy with the backgrounds. You can see it's basically a constant grid. Even the, the lighting and the coloring is just... Looks like a lot of work to me. I'll talk a little bit more about the story and how I felt about it here as we wrap this up. But um, it was very interesting, very thought-provoking. Um, it's not, you know, the most original idea kind of... Um, thinking about the concept of immort immort the immortality and how it would affect one's mind and um, memory and how you deal with these sorts of things. But he also talks a lot about legacy and um, what it means to be immortal with without really living forever. And I thought that was interesting. Um, definitely not, he's not breaking any new ground, but regardless, very thought provoking. We are about to get to, this is really cool in my opinion. So this is kind of showing off that thing I said earlier about how he's got very consistent images of, of, uh, of all this in his head and he can stay consistent when drawing it. So these are really the same area, one being this kind of grid-like shimmering pattern and this being this ancient Greek architecture but he's drawing them back to back and stays very consistent with the angles same here and this is just the angle the kind of bending around the corner kind of skewing everything it's very cool
another light play. And lastly, I want to show off something really cool that's kind of a bonus. This map at the beginning um, is displayed in kind of a very video gamey, like a retro video gamey style. Um, you'll notice some characters from the actual story appearing on it, and this will be spoilers, so if you don't want to see this, skip it. Um, in the back, he recreates the same map, but with the main character's path and ending where he actually ends in the story. And so when I flipped open to that at the very end, I thought it was really cool. It is the same exact image, just with this red dotted line um, put over top of it. I thought that was really clever. He also has a nice word in the back about this new edition. It's collected here in um, a higher quality way, and he's happy about that, So, as we all are, really. so. I hope this was interesting for you guys. I found this book to be um, really, really beautiful. I really obviously love Bablay's work. Um, story was really cool. It's kind of him as a younger creator. Um, he definitely evolves in his style, and obviously his taste changes a bit more towards sci-fi, but I was really happy that he told this more fantasy uh, story here. So I really enjoyed it. I hope you guys did too. Thanks, guys.